previously during the investigation. These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Greenville. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. Welcome back, this is episode 11 of my playthrough of Deadly Premonition. Um, let's waste no time and get hiding. What he's gonna do here is he's going to search the room and occasionally we're gonna have to be forced to hold our breath so that he doesn't detect us. He checks around three or four times. We have to keep holding our breath the entire time until it tells us we can stop. <sighs> if if he doesn't, if we don't for some reason, he will come up to us and instantly kill us. There's not even a QTE you can do to try and escape. Okay, now that we have some breathing room, let's go ahead and assess the situation. <sighs> Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go. Now, you may notice that I have a different suit now. That's because, remember, I changed it in the previous episode. And this is the original data from the first time that I played through this level, so I can save. And I can use continues. Since we seem to have evaded him for now, let's go ahead and flee. Seems to be no shadows plaguing, plaguing the uh, dungeon anymore. This is a QTE chase sequence, and this goes on for a while. You occasionally have to dodge things, and you also have to climb over obstacles and, uh, run. And if you didn't destroy those crates, you will have to push them out of the way. Personally, I really like the style they came up with for this chase sequence, how you can see the raincoat killer, 
and you can see York at the same time. I, I think it's a really nice way to do it. If you do leave a few crates for him, though, it'll stop him and he'll have to axe through them. If he catches up to you, you'll have the opportunity to flee through a QTE. And he'll give you a bit of time before he starts chasing you again. I guess he's enjoying it in a sadistic way. I really loved the way that chase sequence was done. It was probably my favorite part of the game so far. Um, even though the QTE thing for fleeing I, I think is a little ham-fisted, I, I still think the sequence is really well done. I love the split screen between you and the trench coat killer. Now we evaded him for now, so let's go ahead and head down the elevator. The power is turned on. Remember, we did that at the end of the last episode. So now we can escape through the elevator. Seems like we're going to be home free. He was just kicking York's ass there, wasn't he? And we got from him our fourth clue. Come here. 
That's all the information we need, Zack. Let's go back and show them what we found. So we fight the boss in a quick time event. Either way, we did well, but York seems to have taken a pretty bad knock or two. Have you seen any of these things before? No, not that I know of. But that raincoat is a little odd. Odd? In a town where it rains so much? Well, the people here rarely go out in the rain. I moved here during high school and I never really understood why. Can you shed some light on this, George? No. Oh, well... There's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale, to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. A vicious killer in a bright red raincoat. Yeah, that was it. Just a foolish piece of superstition. A rubbish story someone made up. Not many people still believe it, but I guess it's a traditional place. Most of the shops still close up when it rains. School's out, too. And since there's no reason to go out, not many people ever wear raincoats. And now the raincoat killer has leapt out from his picture book. Oh, by the way, would you two kindly show me your backs? Our backs? Is this related to the case? The person with the upside-down peace mark in that photo we found. He's our killer. And what makes you so sure about that? Zack and I saw him kill Anna in the lumber mill. He killed her. Right in there. Oh, one thing. Please don't ask me about Zack. That's a private matter. Anyway, by showing me your backs, we can clear up most of my concerns about you. Isn't that for the best? You do want to remove yourselves from the suspect list. It will make things a lot easier. This is insane. Your methods are rude, insulting, and out of the question. And Emily is a female officer. Forcing her to show you her back is harassment. I don't care if you are FBI or not. You are out of line. Mm-hmm. Hmm. George, it's okay. Let's just show him and get it over with. Emily, are you crazy? Look. We flash our backs, and he'll start trusting us a little more. Right? Agent York? Are you satisfied now? Yes. My apologies. <sighs> now you, George. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can't refuse it now, can I? But don't expect to get your way all the time, Agent Morgan. Hmm. George! What are these scars? Just like your Mr. Zack. Something private. I don't have to tell you about it. Of course. Just like Zack. 
we can understand that, right, Zack? Anyway, this will make things a lot easier from now on. I'm glad to say you're both pretty much off the hook. Thank you for your cooperation. If anyone is suspicious around here, it's him. He's the most suspicious. No, I don't think so. But he certainly is the most irritating. We've studied the crime scene. You know what we have to do next, Zach. George, can we arrange to have the town folk gather in one place? There are some things I want to address with the town folk. Very well. I'll arrange to have as many as possible gather in the community center tomorrow. Thank you, George. <sighs> that brings us to the that brings us to the end of this episode of Deadly Premonition. Uh this has been Conservative Cat. Thank you for watching and have a good day.